What makes Enlisted different from other World War II shooters? Some are more historically accurate and realistic, while others focus on high-speed arcade gunplay. Darkflow seems to have found a niche audience in the gaming community. Enlisted has tapped into this group of gamers by recycling an idea from the early 2000s. But what can these older games tell us and how can they help us improve Enlisted? So strap in scholars, we're going back to the days of the Xbox 360 and America invading third world countries. Thank you. Now watch this drive. <laughs> Having a group of AI-controlled squad mates is nothing new to the gaming community. It has been done before in games such as Full Spectrum Warrior or the more popular Brothers in Arms series. These titles were well received by their audience, but the last Brothers in Arms game was released back in 2008, over 15 years ago. Having an AI squad you control is a selling point for Enlisted. There are more historically accurate games like Postscriptum or Hell It Loose, both of which have you in a squad with other people, but this is the internet and if you think you're going to pull off some Ronald Spear attack on Foy, you're solely mistaken. Alright, I want mortars and grenade launchers on that building till it's gone. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in, forget going around. Everybody else follow me? Yes, sir. This is where the main problem for Enlisted comes in, or at least it's one of the main complaints I see from the player base. Your squad mates aren't really worth controlling. If anything, they're just a bag of meat for you to spawn into after you get killed. Don't get me wrong, this is a nice feature I have come to appreciate after playing the lone fighter mode in my last video, but right now the controls do leave something to be desired if you are a squad leader type player. I also don't want this video to come off like I'm bashing Darkflow or anything, because the AI have come a long way since closed beta. I am no game developer, but I'm sure it's quite difficult to balance out the effectiveness of the bots in the game. If you play back in 2021, you probably remember getting 360 no-scope through trees by them. It's kind of like a tightrope balancing act between making them super effective or just brain dead. Plus, Enlisted is an FPS, not an RTS. So the more control you give the player over their squad, the more complex the interface is going to be. Right now the level of control you have is basically you can send your full squad or a specific individual by looking at the area and pressing X. The little highlighted indicator will show where they're headed and they don't really seek any kind of cover or, you know, take the most optimal path. You're able to ping an area and your AI will focus their attention on that specific location as well. But these are very basic controls and it doesn't really allow you to have any kind of fancy maneuvers. So let's go back to those game titles I spoke about in the beginning of the video. I'm going to focus on Full Spectrum Warrior here because I think that that system of squad control is a perfect fit for Enlisted. In Full Spectrum Warrior, you had two fire teams, Alpha and Bravo. You could switch between the two and give them separate commands independently. When giving a move command, you could give your fire team elements actually spots that they could go to get up against cover, and they would stay inside that cover. The game even had a system where you could tell your element to lay down suppressing fire in a circular area. By having these command systems, you were actually able to do some fire maneuvering, or what we like to call in the Marine Corps, bounding. While maneuvering, the AI fire team members were exposed, less accurate, and they could be dispatched with ease. But in cover, they were honestly something to be afraid of. They would throw grenades at enemies nearby, get pinned down if they were under heavy fire, and would communicate enemy locations to you. You honestly felt like a squad leader in the US military. I truly believe a similar system would work wonders for enlisted. Being able to break up your squad into fire teams of three would give us the ability to switch between the two elements with ease and place a marker to put them directly into cover. Now there are some potential issues with implementing this idea, so I want to address a few of them. One, what do you do with a squad that has less than seven guys? Let's take the FNAB Premium Squad from Tunisia as an example. It's only made up of four guys. This is a really easy solution. You just make the three guys into one fire team and then you as the fire team leader. And you can scale this to whatever size squad you have. Number two is that Enlisted is too fast paced for this to work. And I would kind of agree with you if this was 2022. But since the team changeover at Darkflow, they have progressively been making this game slower and slower feeling. You run slower now, there is more sway to your rifle when you're ADSing on the move, and of course they got rid of the bunny hopping around corners. As the game continues to slow down, it's going to be even more and more important for you to be able to control your AI squad mates. Now number three is my biggest concern with implementing this command system. In Full Spectrum Warrior, you were either the Alpha or the Bravo element, and you couldn't move independently from that element. This made the controls a lot easier for the players in that game. Being able to move freely from your squad is key to the success of Enlisted. The way I would like to see this implemented is having the current system just upgraded by adding the indicators to show where the squad is moving to that cover and then having them programmed to stay in that cover. 
Basically, you would hit X to bring up the movement boxes, and then you could look and move around with that interface up. Once you had a suitable location for your fireteam element, you could confirm the order by double tapping X, and the L key would allow you to cycle through all the fireteam elements you had in your squad. If you're still a little bit confused, it's basically you're not having to move your entire squad to one spot or having to individually select soldiers and put them in the correct spot you want them. It's going to be broken down by the fire team and you're going to have more control of where you can put those guys in cover. And if you're still confused, I really don't know how to make this more clear. So moving on, number five, we have bigger problems with the game currently. Now this is totally a matter of opinion and I'm just going to have to disagree with you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, having these AI squad mates is what makes Enlisted a different game from other World War II shooters on the market. So the improvement of the AI squad mates is a key aspect in order to keep the game alive and well and our player base growing, otherwise people are just going to pick other World War II shooters to play. Immersion wise, having animated hand signals when you're giving an order to those squad mates and some voice lines from them telling you enemy locations would add to the chaos of battle and really make you feel like you are that squad leader in a much bigger engagement. Think about it in this type of scenario. Currently, when you play enlisted, you just run around as one guy and you keep shooting until you get hit and then you switch to the next guy back into the action and you continue the process over and over again until that squad is completely wiped out. Now think about a situation where you're on like the D-Day Normandy map and you're trying to attack this bunker. With this system, you would be able to have the Bravo element, you know, suppress that bunker while your Alpha element, you know, went on this flank in order to get to the side of it. Then you could switch quickly to that Alpha element, take control of a guy, run it into the bunker, clear it on out, and then move your Bravo team element up. I am sure there are some problems or issues that I haven't thought of with this idea. Hell, it might even be a terrible idea. So I want to hear from you guys. Put down in the comments how you would improve on the AI. I really want to be able to give the devs some suggestions on how they can improve it. But I'm just one player. It's you, the scholars, that make up this gaming community. So let's hear it. And while you're down there in the comment section, be sure to like and subscribe, as it does help me get this video discovered in the vast oceans of YouTube. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters. And as always, scholars, hit those books and hit those bottles. Cheers.